Hi folks. In this video, I will demonstrate how to obtain estimates and tests of indirect effects and total effects when carrying out path analysis using the Levine package. This video is a continuation from a previous video that covers basic concepts and techniques when running path analysis using manifest variables. So if you're unfamiliar with the basics of the Levine model syntax and or the Levine function, you may need to review uh, that information before getting started here. A link to the previous video as well as a CSV file containing the data and this text file will be provided underneath the video description. So be sure to download those and follow along. So let me begin by noting that the model is specified uh, that we're going to be using in this demonstration is specified exactly the same as in the previous video. However, now I will be including labels for paths and code for calculating indirect and total effects. The syntax that I'll be uh, working from is actually contained in this section of our uh, text file. So before I actually get started with that, let me walk through the basic model. I've actually uh, have a um, path diagram drawn up in PowerPoint. So let's walk through that before we go through the syntax. So here we have our model, and basically you'll notice that we have um, essentially three exogenous variables. We have SES, mastery, and performance goals. We've got two mediating variables, interest and anxiety, and then uh, our outcome variable is achievement. So um, uh, these variables right here are all treated or considered exogenous uh, because there's, there are no variables that are predicting uh, these right here, so uh, there are no arrows that are pointing to these. Only We only have the double-headed arrows signifying correlation or, or covariance between them. Um, and then the remaining three variables are endogenous, so they are basically being predicted by other variables within the model. Now you'll notice that uh, what I've done is I've kind of uh, broken this out into different effects. And may, we're going to mainly focus on the effect of mastery goals on achievement. So um, what I've done is I've labeled various paths to kind of demonstrate these different kinds of effects. So first off, all of the single-headed arrows that you see in this diagram, they are all considered direct effects, uh, reflecting the effect of one variable on another. So indirect effects basically are those that are flowing through a mediating variable. So when it comes to the effect of mastery on achievement, um, we have the effect uh, being mediated, or at least being modeled as mediated, through the interest variable, or at least partially mediated. So you'll notice that we have mastery, we have an arrow pointing to interest, and then interest is now pointing to achievement. Um, so I, what I've done is I've labeled path A and path B right here. And we can consider that effect, um, the indirect effect, is just basically the product of those two path coefficients. We also have the effect of mastery on achievement being mediated through the anxiety variable right here. And so I've labeled those paths D and E right here. So um, you'll notice that we have essentially two specific indirect effects. We have uh, one specific indirect effect of mastery on achievement flowing through interest and the second specific indirect effect flowing through anxiety. So over here uh, you'll notice that I've just kind of laid out um, what I'm talking about. You'll see that I've got specific, the first specific indirect effect which is flowing through interest is just path A times path B. The second specific indirect effect uh, which we have right here is just path D times D, path E. And then we could talk about the total indirect effect of mastery on achievement by just summing up those two specific indirect effects. Finally, we could talk about the total effect of mastery on achievement if we take the total indirect effect, which we calculated right here, and add it to the direct effect, because there is a remaining direct effect, which is represented by path C. So we want to take into account um, this labeling uh, when it comes to our uh, Levine syntax. So let's go back uh, to our syntax. So as you can see, what we have is um, I have uh, an object that's being created. It's called model, and this is just an arbitrary name. And basically what you'll notice is that we have um, all of our model specification contained in this area. And so you'll see we have model. We follow that up with an arrow, which is just basically a less than sign and a hyphen. And then you'll see a single apostrophe. And this basically starts the code, or starts um, uh, indicating um, our, our model specifications. 
Uh, as a bit of a reminder, the pound signs are, are essentially used to reflect comments. And so I've been pretty liberal in incorporating uh, those pound signs and comments in here to, to indicate what uh, I'm doing as I'm going through. So first off, you'll notice that we have uh, the interest variable uh, followed by a tilde, and then you've got mastery, performance goals, and SES. All of those are separated by plus signs. But you'll notice that I've included also uh, an A and then a star. And the A is the label for the first path within our first specific indirect effect. And that is the path from mastery goals to interest. So I'm assigning a label of A uh, for that particular path. So the coefficient is going to be estimated, but now we have a label for it. Okay, so next uh, you'll see that I'm uh, essentially going to be creating a path from interest to achieve and labeling that path. So um, in this particular case right here, we have our path B. So you'll see we've got achieve, and you'll see that we have anxiety, interest, and mastery. Again, all separated by plus signs. But now you can see that we have path B right here. So I have B times interest. And that um, is giving us a label for that particular path within our model. I've also added um, a direct effect, uh, or a label for the direct effect of mastery on achievement by incorporating the C star right here. So now I've got basically paths A, B, and C that are being, uh, that are being labeled within our model. So just recall, paths A and B are being used to calculate the first specific indirect effect via the interest variable or the mediator. Uh, and then for our second specific indirect effect, we need a path D and E. So in this particular case, we have uh, anxiety being predicted by, again, performance goals and mastery goals. But now I'm labeling the path from mastery goals to anxiety as D. And then also up here from uh, anxiety to the achieve variable, I'm labeling this path E. So you can see we have an E star right there. Now in terms of the rest of the model, you'll see that um, right here I'm just kind of indicating that uh, these are the variances for my exogenous variables that are being uh, estimated and, and you can tell because we have the two tilde signs that are being reflected whereas in our uh, our former uh, the equations we we're talking about above we only have a single tilde sign uh, being reflected uh, next off we have uh, estimates of the uh, variances of the residuals for the endogenous variables. So there's interest and interest, anxiety and anxiety, and achieve and achieve. So again, all of these were covered in the previous video. I also have an estimate of the covariance of the residuals for interest and anxiety. So that's uh, it as well. And again, that was covered previously. Now, where things uh, get fun is in terms of calculating the specific indirect effects, the total indirect effect, and then our total uh, uh, effect. So you'll see that I've got my little comment sign right here. So we're going to start off with the first specific indirect effect of mastery on achievement via the interest variable. So I'm essentially providing a name for the estimate, which I'm just going to call it SIE1. And it's followed by a colon sign and then an equal sign. Then to the right, I have A star B. So those are the labels that we used up above in terms of those paths. So it's basically the path from mastery uh, to interest was path A. And then the path from interest to achieve was path B. And so that's why we are multiplying those two estimates together. Then we are calculating the second specific indirect effect via the anxiety variable. So again, we used our labels. Uh, so mastery to anxiety, that path was labeled D. And then from anxiety to achievement, that path was labeled E. So here I'm creating a new name for uh, a second estimate, which is SIE2. That's just our specific indirect effect. These are arbitrary names, by the way followed by colon and then the equal sign. Then we have D times E that's uh, reflected. On the next section, we're going to calculate the total indirect effects so, because that may be something that, you be, you, that you're interested in. And so in this case, I'm creating a new estimate, which I'm just going to call TIE for 
um, total indirect effect. You'll see that I again I have colon and then an equal sign, and then following that I've got SIE one plus SIE two, which is uh, those those previous um, uh, calculations that I was uh, showing you. Then finally, uh, I'm going to calculate the total uh, effect of mastery on achievement. So I'm just going to say um, essentially that I made just a wee bit of an error in terms of the coding. So let me just kind of uh, include one additional thing. I'm going to type in SIE1 plus SIE2 plus C, which is that direct effect of mastery goals on achievement. By the same token, uh, and if I didn't want to do that, uh, what I could have easily done is just typed in TIE plus uh, C, and that would accomplish the same thing. So at the very end of it all, you'll notice that I have an end apostrophe. So just remember that between the two single apostrophes lies the code for uh, specifying the model and, and so forth. So now what we want to do is to, um, let's go ahead and copy this and paste it into R. And really before I do this, I'm going to use the library function just to make sure that uh, the Levon is active. So I'm going to type in library and then Levon. And so it's ready to go. And now I'm just going to paste in our code and then hit enter. So now uh, we have our object that is um, in R that contains all of our code uh, for our model specification. Now we want to actually run the analysis. So to do this, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to create a new object. I'm going to call this fit. That's going to contain the results from our analysis. So you'll see I've got fit followed by an arrow pointing to it. And then I've got the Levine, which is our Levine function. And with, within, inside the parenthesis, you'll notice that I've got model, which is the name of our object that contains the syntax with the model specification. Uh, comma, then data equals process data. That's the actual, the data frame uh, that contains our data. And then comma, SE, that's for standard error, equals, and inside the quotation marks, I've got bootstrap. So I'm actually going to be generating bootstrap standard errors in order to test the indirect effects within the model. And then once that analysis has been run, I'm going to use the summary function in order to uh, take a look at basically the fit of the model and look at all the estimates uh, within the model. So let's go ahead and uh, copy this and paste it into R and then run our analysis. So I'm going to call up R again and let me get rid of those lines right there. And I'm just going to uh, paste it in and hit enter. So it takes a few seconds in order to run the analysis because we're using bootstrap uh, procedures in order to uh, calculate the standard errors for um, our indirect effects and total effects. And uh, actually what it will also do is just generate uh, bootstrap estimates for all of the standard errors within the model. But we're going to focus on the indirect and total effects. So at this point um, the um, analysis has been run and you'll see that we've got we're going to use our fit object. So I'm just going to type in summary and then inside the uh, parenthesis fit comma fit dot measures equals true and hit enter and so there you go so when we kind of scroll up here you'll notice that we have uh, again we have our chi-square value the degrees of freedom p value we have all the standard um, fit statistics and all of these values are basically the same as what i covered in the previous video but scrolling down you'll notice that it says number of requested uh, bootstrap straw. So, uh, draws. So you'll notice first off it says standard errors, bootstrap, uh, number of draws 1000, that's the default. And as you scroll down, the standard errors that you see right here are actually going to be different from what I demonstrated in the previous video because these are all based on uh, the uh, bootstrap procedure. But again, um, we're going to mainly focus on the indirect and total effects. So as you look at the very bottom right here, you'll see it says define parameters. And it's got SIE1, SIE2, uh, there's our TIE and TE. So these are all the estimates uh, that are um, calculated uh, based on our um, 
our uh, uh, path coefficients and so forth, you'll notice that we have the standard errors. These are bootstrap standard errors, and then you have a Z value and P value. If you want to use confidence intervals instead, um, it's, it's really pretty easy to obtain. What we can do is type in uh, parameter estimates. So I'm going to type in parameter and then capital E estimates and then type in uh, fit right here, enter. And so now you'll see that we have confidence intervals and these are uh, based on the bootstrap standard error. So you'll see it says SE right here and you'll notice that the standard errors that you see up here are going to be the exact same values that you see uh, down here. So you can see there's SIE 1, SIE 2, uh, tie, that's our total indirect effect, and TE. So these are the standard errors. And then these are the bootstrap uh, uh, confidence intervals. Um, and so you can see right here that basically uh, these are the lower and the upper bounds for those different effects that we've been uh, testing. And basically the idea is that if the null of zero falls between the lower and upper bound for any of those effects, then we would infer that the population effect is zero. Um, if the null falls outside of that confidence interval, then it would indicate that the population of, uh, effect is non-zero. So if we look at uh, SIE1, which is essentially the effect of mastery goals on achievement via the interest variable uh, right here, so this is the specific in, that specific indirect effect. You can see zero. Uh, falls outside of the lower and the upper bound for that confidence interval, so we would infer that the population indirect effect uh, is uh, not zero. For the indirect effect of mastery goals on achievement via the anxiety variable, which is, again, the product of paths D and E, this is the uh, estimate right here, and you can see that zero does fall between the lower and the upper bound. So for that specific indirect effect, we would infer that the population uh, indirect effect is zero. Uh, for the total indirect effect, uh, this is uh, it right here, the estimates, which is 0.165, and you can see right here, zero falls outside of the lower and the upper bound, which is not a big surprise given uh, the indirect effect, the first specific indirect effect. So the total indirect effect is just, in, uh, we would infer that uh, is uh, basically non-zero within the population. And then the total effect of mastery on achievement, uh, which again is just the sum of all the specific indirect effects and the direct effect, you can see um, zero does not fall between the lo lower and the upper bound. So that pretty well uh, concludes this demonstration of how to obtain uh, indirect and total effects when carrying out path analysis with uh, R, and more specifically, the Levon, pro, uh, the Levon package. So um, at any rate, I appreciate you watching. If you find this video and the supporting materials uh, helpful, um, uh, be sure to like the video and share it with others. And once again, uh, just keep in mind that underneath the video description, there is that link for the previous video that I was referencing, as well as the data set and uh, the text file.